if you see the it from, fact is that if you see it from voters uh, a voters point of view or just ordinary folks you know who are watching this you know play out in parliament uh, you know the the government claims that some i think 4 lakh rupees are spent every minute for the running of parliament you look at taxpayer money being wasted and i have to ask okay what if you did wait for nirmala sitaraman to come back you debate other issues in the house till then and then take up the price rises so i mean covid normally okay you're in isolation for a week 10 days and then you're back so Look, why, why not wait? Look, this is a, a political call that has been made by others, not by my, by me. I'm, even, I'm speaking to you as an ordinary MP. I'm not one of the decision makers or the official leaders uh, in this process. But I will say that my understanding very simply is that it became important in their eyes, uh, in their judgment, to ensure that the burning issues of the country were showcased first, rather than allowing the government to reduce parliament to a discussion of relatively irrelevant or marginal issues like the Antarctic bill and some other routine bills. The government does not seem to be prepared with any major substantive legislation. We don't have the personal data protection bill. We don't have any serious far-reaching pieces of social legislation or of economic policy. There was talk of reviewing the bankruptcy code. That's not before the House. We've got some very, very and I, I'm sorry to use the word trivial, but relatively trivial issues that the government is trying to shove through the house because that's all they're ready with. Whereas when it comes to the really important issues that the nation expects to see Parliament discussing, I'm sorry to say that there is no attempt by the government to discuss it. So, so that's the bottom line in all of this. I, I, I'm not, as I say, I'm not going to sit here saying that uh, disruption is a good thing. My own colleagues know that I'm not a, a fan of disruption, and I personally believe that parliament is for debate and not for disruption. But I'm trying to explain to you, as somebody who didn't take this decision, trying to explain to you why this decision is understandable in the circumstances in which uh, we've been conducting parliament in the last few so years. Then give, given we the... have a catastrophic breakdown of relations between the government and the opposition. The government is genuinely so arrogant about its brute majority that it seems to be contemptuous. Uh, of the need to accommodate opposition voices, uh, opposition agenda issues, and it is essentially willing to bulldoze its bills and its its priorities through the House. 